Three main sets of works are attributed to Florus a Roman cognomen, Virgilius orator and poeta, an epitome of Roman history and a collection of poems 26 tetrameters, and five hexameters about roses. As to whether these were composed by the same person, or set of people, is unclear, but the works are variously attributed to Publius Annius Florus, described as a Roman poet and rhetorician Julius Florus, described as an ancient Roman poet, orator, and author who was born around 74 AD and died around 130 AD Florus was born in Africa, but raised in Rome. Lucius Annaeus Florus circa ad, a Roman historian, who lived in the time of Trajan and Hadrian and was also born in Africa <laughs> Virgilius orator and poeta The introduction to a dialogue called Virgilius Orator and Poeta is extant, in which the author whose name is given as Publius Annius Florus states that he was born in Africa, and at an early age took part in the literary contests on the capital instituted by Domitian. Having been refused a prize owing to the prejudice against African provincials, he left Rome in disgust, and after traveling for some time, set up at Terraco as a teacher of rhetoric. Here he was persuaded by an acquaintance to return to Rome, for it is generally agreed that he is the Florus who wrote the well-known lines quoted together with Hadrian's answer by Aelius Spartianus Hadrian I 6. 26 trochaic tetrameters, de qualitate vitae, and five graceful hexameters, de roses, are also attributed to him. <laughs> Poems Florus was also an established poet. He was once thought to have been the first in order of a number of second-century African writers who exercised a considerable influence on Latin literature, and also the first of the poetae neoterici or novelli new poets of Hadrian's reign, whose special characteristic was the use of lighter and graceful meters and iambic dimeters, which had hitherto found little favor. Since Cameron's article on the topic, however, the existence of such a school has been widely called into question, in part because the remnants of all poets supposedly involved are too scantily attested for any definitive judgment. The little poems will be found in E. Barnes, Poetae Latini Minores, for an unlikely identification of Floris with the author of the Provigilium Veneris, C. E. H. O. Muller, De P. Anino Floro Poeta et de Provigilio Veneris, 1855, and, for the relations with Hadrian, Franz Eisenhardt, Hadrian und Floris 1882, see also Friedrich Marx in Pauli Wissowa's Real Encyclopédie, I. P.T. 2, 1894. Some his better-known poems include Quality of Life, Roses in Springtime, Roses, The Rose, Venus's Rose Garden, and The Nine Muses. Floris' better-known poetry is also associated with his smaller poems that he would write to Hadrian out of admiration for the emperor. Topic. Epitome of Roman history The two books of the Epitome of Roman history were written in admiration of the Roman people. The books illuminate many historical events in a favorable tone for the Roman citizens. The documentation the book provides is mainly based on the writings of Livy, who was a Roman historian and author responsible for the work A Flat Urba Condita Libri. It consists of a brief sketch of the history of Rome from the foundation of the city to the closing of the Temple of Janus by Augustus 25 BC. The work, which is called Epitome de T. Livio Bellorum Omnium Inorum DCC Libri Duo, is written in a bombastic and rhetorical style, a panegyric of the greatness of Rome, the life of which is divided into the periods of infancy, youth and manhood. It is often wrong in geographical and chronological details. In spite of its faults, the book was much used as a handy epitome of Roman history, in the Middle Ages, and survived as a textbook into the 19th century. Florus is credited with being politically unbiased for almost all of his work. However, many will say that after reviewing his descriptions of the Civil War, he seems to position himself closer to Julius Caesar than Pompeius. Florus starts his books with the founding of Rome and ends them with the reign of Augustus. The first book of the epitome of Roman history is mainly about the establishment and growth of Rome. 
The second is mainly about the decline of Rome and its changing morals. Florus has taken some criticism on his writing due to inaccuracies found chronologically and geographically in his stories, but even so, the epitome of Roman history was vastly popular during the late antiquity and the Middle Ages, as well as being used as a school book until the 19th century. The use of his writings far beyond his time is a testament to his premier narrative skills. In the manuscripts, the writer is variously named as Julius Florus, Lucius Annius Florus, or simply Annius Florus. From certain similarities of style, he has been identified as Publius Annius Florus, poet, rhetorician, and friend of Hadrian, author of a dialogue on the question of whether Virgil was an orator or poet, of which the introduction has been preserved. The most accessible modern text and translation are in the Loeb Classical Library No. 231, published 1984, ISBN 0-674-99254-7. Christopher Planton, Antwerp, in 1567, published two Lucius Floris texts two title pages in one volume. The titles were roughly as follows, 1 Livlii Flori de Gestis Romanorum, Historiarum, 2. Commentarius Istadii Livlii Flori de Gestis Romanorum, Historiarum. The first title has 149 pages, the second has 222 pages plus an index in a 12 mo size book. <laughs> Attribution of the works <laughs> Tentative biography The Florus identified as Julius Florus was one of the young men who accompanied Tiberius on his mission to settle the affairs of Armenia. He has been variously identified with Julius Florus, a distinguished orator and uncle of Julius Secundus, an intimate friend of Quintilian in Stet. X. 3, 13, with the leader of an insurrection of the Treviri Tacitus, and e. 40, with the posthumous of Horus Odes, e. 14, and even with the historian Florus. Under Domitian's rule, he competed in the capital competition, which was an event in which poets received rewards and recognition from the emperor himself. Although he acquired great applause from the crowds, he was not victorious in the event. Florus himself blamed his loss on favoritism on behalf of the emperor. Shortly after his defeat, Florus departed from Rome to travel abroad. His travels are said to have taken him through the Greek-speaking sections of the Roman Empire, taking in Sicily, Crete, the Cyclades, Rhodes, and Egypt. At the conclusion of his travels, he resided in Taraco, Spain. In Taraco, Florus founded a school and taught literature. During this time, he also began to write the epitome of Roman history. After many years in Spain, he eventually migrated back to Rome during the rule of Hadrian, 117 to 138 AD. Hadrian and Florus became very close friends, and Florus was rumored to be involved in government affairs during the second half of Hadrian's rule. References This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Florus, Publius Annius. Encyclopædia Britannica. 10 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. p. 547. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Florus, Julius. Encyclopædia Britannica. 10 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. p. 547. Bibliography <inaudible> 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 Jonah Lendering. Publius Annius Floris. Livius.org. Jose Miguel Alonso Nunez, 2006. Floro y los historiadores contemporaneos. Acta Classica Universitatis Scientiarum de Bresonensis, 42 117 126. W. Den Boer. Some Minor Roman Historians. Leiden, Brill. Floris, 2005, c. 120. Romisch Geschichte, Lettenisch und Deutsch. Engel, Ubers, und Kommentiert von Gunter Laser. Darmstadt, Wissenschaftliche Buchgesellschaft. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Floris. Encyclopædia Britannica. 10, 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. p. 547. 
Topic: External links. Latin and English texts of Florus, Epitome of Roman History, the 1929 Loeb Classical Library translation by E. S. Forster, Bill Thayer's edition at Lacuscurtius.